There are wooden beams in Europe, Asia, and the North Atlantic world that have carried weight for 800 years or more. They have endured rain, insects, ground moisture, and constant temperature swings, yet they remain structurally sound. Meanwhile, modern lumber, even when chemically treated, often begins to soften and fail within a few decades. This contrast raises an uncomfortable question. How did ancient builders create wood that could resist rot for generations without chemicals, pressure tanks, or synthetic sealants? The answer lies in an ancient timber cure that focused on changing the wood itself rather than coating it and hoping for the best. Once you understand this cure, you'll see why it worked so well and how you can still apply it today. Ancient builders, you know, they treated rot as a problem of chemistry and biology. Rot does not appear randomly. Ancient builders understood that decay organisms, well, they need moisture, oxygen, and digestible compounds inside the wood. Instead of fighting rot after construction, they removed those conditions beforehand. Their timber cure was a sequence of steps designed to dry the wood deeply, exhaust internal sugars, and reinforce the fibers with natural preservatives. This approach created timber that resisted decay even when exposed to damp environments. The goal was not to make wood indestructible, but to make it biologically uninteresting. Long-term seasoning was the foundation of the ancient cure. The most important part of the ancient timber cure was time. Logs and beams were air-seasoned for years, often under simple shelters that blocked rain but allowed wind to pass through. This slow drying allowed moisture to leave gradually, preventing cracks and warping. More importantly, sugars and starches inside the wood oxidized and broke down. These compounds are the primary food source for fungi. By the time the timber was used, much of that food was gone. This is why ancient beams feel dense and dry rather than soft or spongy. Modern kiln drying, well, it removes water quickly but leaves sugars behind creating wood that looks dry, but still feeds rot. Seasoned timber was often stored in smoky environments, such as longhouses, workshops, or barns with open hearths. Smoke carried natural antimicrobial compounds that penetrated the wood over time. Phenols and organic acids in smoke inhibit fungal growth and discourage insects. At the same time, gentle heat drove out remaining moisture without damaging the structure. This slow exposure hardened the wood and reduced its ability to absorb water later. You can still see this effect in old barn beams that resist decay far better than newer replacements. Controlled fire was used strategically to protect vulnerable surfaces. Posts and beams destined for ground contact were often lightly charred. Charring converts the outer layer of wood into a carbon-rich surface that resists moisture, insects, and fungi. Unlike modern coatings, this carbon layer does not peel or crack. It moves with the wood as temperatures change. 
This treatment dramatically extended the lifespan of fence post foundations and waterfront structures. Even today, lightly charring the lower portion of posts before installation can add decades to their service life. Mineral and tannin exposure, you know, really strengthened wood from within. In many regions, timber was soaked in mineral-rich water bogs or tannin-heavy solutions. Tannins bind to wood fibers and create an environment that's, well, hostile to decay organisms. Oxygen-poor conditions further slowed microbial activity. Wood preserved this way could honestly survive for centuries underground. You can adapt this technique by soaking wood in strong tannin solutions made from oak bark or leaves, or in saltwater brine. Even short exposure begins altering the wood's chemistry and resistance to rot. Natural oils and tars sealed wood without suffocating it. The final step in the ancient timber cure involved applying natural oils or tars. Pine tar, birch tar and animal oils penetrated deeply into prepared wood. These substances repelled water while allowing internal moisture to escape. This breathability prevented the trapped moisture that often leads to rot under modern sealants. Ancient ships, roofs and outdoor structures relied on these finishes for long-term protection. Reapplication was simple and did not require stripping or sanding. So, here's how you can actually apply the ancient timber cure to your own modern backyard projects. You know, you really don't need to recreate an ancient workshop to use this knowledge. Start by air seasoning your wood for a bit longer than most folks recommend. Make sure to store it off the ground and allow plenty of good airflow around it. If you can, expose the wood to gentle heat or even a bit of smoke. And for any surfaces that'll be in contact with soil or heavy moisture, well, lightly charring them can make a real difference. Also, it's worth considering soaking your wood in tannin-rich or saltwater solutions for that extra layer of protection. And rather than reaching for rigid sealants, finish with a breathable oil or tar. It's a simple change, but it really helps the wood last longer. You know, even combining two or three of these steps dramatically improves durability. Fence posts, sheds, raised beds and outdoor furniture all benefit from this approach. Why this ancient cure still matters today. Ancient builders built for continuity, not convenience. Their timber cure was refined through observation and necessity. In a time when materials are often designed for replacement, this knowledge offers a way to build things meant to last across generations. If you value forgotten skills, deep history and practical building wisdom that still works today, Make sure you subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share this video with others who care about craftsmanship that endures.